Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey. I am from the website Plagiarism Today, which can be found at plagiarismtoday.com, and today I want to do a follow-up to the previous video I did about the H3H3 lawsuit. Bing! Gonna put a card up there if I can remember to do it. And basically what I want to do is I want to first off cover the things that have transpired since I did my last video, and then I want to answer probably the question that I've been asked more than I would like to admit. Um, can H3H3 lose this lawsuit? What are the prospects of this lawsuit? I'll do my best to dive into that. But first, let me say thank you to everyone who liked and shared the video, the previous one. Big, big help. I'm a small YouTuber. I'm still fairly new here, guys. I appreciate the help in getting the word out a little bit. Please keep it up, even though I have to say I'm a little nervous that this video will not be quite as popular because of some of the difficult truths I will be discussing. However, please bear in mind, I am indeed just the messenger. Now, real quick here to try and recap the lawsuit super fast, because I'm pretty sure nearly everyone's familiar with it. Uh, Matt Haas, as I'm going to call it, I'm not even attempting that, um, better known as the bold guy on YouTube, filed a lawsuit against Ethan and Gila Klein, aka H3H3 Productions, over a video that H3H3 did making fun of um, Haas's parkour and or girl picking up skills. I still don't understand his channel. I'm not even going to attempt to lie. Now, not a lot has changed in the litigation front. I don't believe anything new has been filed, but there has been a lot of changes in sort of the world around it. Because when H3H3 did their video talking about the lawsuit and talking about that, it was basically announcing that it was happening, um, they specifically said that they're not going to ask for crowd for crowdfunding or any kind of campaign like that. Well, the crowdfunders did not listen. A crowdfunding campaign was launched and quickly raised well over a hundred thousand dollars. And in quite a brilliant move, I think. Rather than that money going to H3H3, that money is instead going directly to their attorney. Their attorney, by the way, is better known as the video game attorney, Mr. Ryan Morrison. And he has started a new Fair Use Protection Account, or FUPA, which I have to admit is an amazing acronym, um, and which he will use to defend other people who are being threatened when they are engaging in fair use. I think that's a really, really great idea because, yes, indeed, I am a strong supporter of copyright, but I am also a strong supporter of fair use. Those two things are not cognitively dissonant in my head. So, yes, that is a major, major development in this case. And it does one thing very important for H3H3. It levels the playing field. As I said in the previous video, odds are Haas is not playing with his own money. Um, he has a copyright registration, he has a defendant that has money, he has a, an attorney in the correct jurisdiction. This attorney almost certainly took this on some kind of a contingency fee basis, assuming that when the lawsuit is settled or they emerge victorious, that he'll be able to collect attorney's fees. And that's especially true since with the proper registration and all that jazz, and there's the registration image, I forgot to put it up for you, um, but with the registration and all that jazz, the court will be inclined, if they emerge victorious, to award attorney's fees to the victor here. Um, so yes, the attorney here probably is one funding this case moving forward for right now. Now, the issue that a lot of people have been asking me is, what is the prospect of them losing this case? And that's a very, very tough question to answer. Now, I said in my previous video that I strongly believe this is a fair use. I've, and now that I've actually watched the video, which was re-uploaded, I further that opinion. They used only very, very short clips. Not too much of the original video was made up of Haas's work, and most of it was making fun or laughing at him. But I think the bigger issue here is that Haas isn't really upset about the copyright element. This isn't like, you know, someone being upset about piracy or plagiarism or something like that. This is, he's upset that, you know, they made fun of him. They hurt his feelings, basically. And there you go. That's why he's suing. Copyright was just the tool that he had at his disposal to file the suit. And like I said, he did a really good job getting his ducks in a row. I'm actually kind of impressed. I don't know how many YouTubers, especially, you know, ones that aren't attached to major corporations, go through and do these registrations on everything. But yeah, that he's got his ducks in a row. So I am indeed impressed by that. But yes, that brings us back to the question. Even with this crowdfunding, even with the support, what are the prospects for the lawsuit? And the answer is, I don't know. I've said my belief. I believe it's a fair use. I joined the majority. But I'm not the judge. And I'm not getting anywhere near that jury. A, I'm not in New York. And B, they're not going to let someone who's ever been an expert witness serve on a jury. That would just be stupid. Um, 
So what I did do is I actually, and I'd done this research previously, a few, I'll put the link below, but I did a, an article on plagiarism today about reaction channels here on YouTube. And th that article was more targeted, not like at H3H3, H3, but at those reaction channels, I like to play the full video while they sit there and just stare at it. And I don't understand that either. There's a lot on YouTube that confuses me. I, I, I feel like an old man talking about this sometimes, but regardless, um... I did some research into fair use cases that might be somewhat relevant, and I found two that are interesting and I want to talk about at least in brief here. Um, the first actually involves the WWF. Now, that is the correct logo. This case was 2001. They did not get the F out until 2002. Ha! So, yeah, don't, ch don't, don't challenge me on this. I know this. But the long and short of it is the Parents Television Council compiled a bunch of clips from the WWF, I sounds wrong to say it that way now, and put it in a video that they were using to fundraise and sort of say, look how bad these guys are. Well, that case made it for the uh, Southern District of New York. I've got the case file up here. And long story short, the court ruled that it was not a fair use. That's right, even for the purpose of commentary and criticism directly against and decrying this organization, it was not ruled a fair use. Now, another one that I found interesting, this one involves um, the estate of Elvis Presley and this apparently a 160 freaking hour multi-DVD documentary called The Definitive Elvis. The Definitive Elvis, and this is just part 10 on the screen now, it's apparently a huge box set, available on Amazon if you're interested. Um, but the long and short of it is they compiled this huge documentary and about 5 to 10 percent of it was comprised of material that was unlicensed from the Elvis Presley estate. Well, the Elvis Presley estate sued, and even though it was just 5 to 10 percent, even though they didn't do commentary and criticism over top of it, the court, and this time around we're talking about the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, that's the California Appeals Court, basically, the West Coast Appeals Court, if you will, ruled that it was not a fair use. Fair use was not found. Now, these cases have a lot of differences from the H3H3 case. For example, the um, Elvis Presley estate makes a large amount of their revenue licensing the footage they do hold to various documentaries and various television shows and filmmakers and whatnot. So there was a legitimate market for that. There was not one. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the bold guy was not going to license his video so that he could be roundly mocked on a YouTube channel. That type of thing doesn't happen. And with the World Wrestling Federation case. You have the direct, basically the issue there was that the court ruled that they were intentionally using it to directly make money, where, well, yes, H3H3 is for profit. It's a little bit different when it's just a means to show ads rather than using it as direct fundraising. But still, while there are differences, this does show that sometimes fair use is kind of a weird beast. Now, I think it's fair use, but if that judge or that jury disagrees with me, there you go. It's a different ball game. And I make it a rule in my life to never, ever, ever bet on court cases, especially, especially fair use ones. I mean, if I bet on court cases, I would have lost my house on the Blurred Lines trial recently. All this would not be here. I would have nothing. I'd be homeless under a bridge somewhere, and that would be it. Um, so yes, it's a very good thing I don't bet on trials. Long and short of it is this. Even though I believe in most people, including Mr. Ryan Morrison, by the way, who, even though I am not a fair use expert, he most definitively is one, and he, as I pointed out previously from his Reddit post, um, I'll put it back up here, he said that he's gotten over seven, in this post here, he's talked about how he's gotten hundreds of people who've written him asking for help with fair use issues on YouTube, and basically that nearly all of them were just, you know, infringing and frankly deserve to have their work taken down. He is very, very, very selective about the cases he picks up. So I do trust his judgment even more than my own in some ways. He's not going to take up this case if he doesn't feel it has a very good chance at victory. Now, the issue is this, though. It's still unpredictable. If that judge or that jury disagree with me and disagrees with the rest of YouTube, it could go a very, very unpredictable way. And by very unpredictable, I mean they could support or back Hoss. Um, it could happen. We have to stop thinking of this lawsuit as being a slam dunk. They're going to win it. They've got the money to fight this. It's over. It's not over. Haas could still win. It's, think of it like this. 
they're approaching a roulette table. Now, I feel the roulette table is pretty roundly stacked in favor of H3H3 H3, based upon what I know and how I interpret the law, but it could still land on a square I didn't bet on. I could still be wrong. I could still lose this one, and so could H3H3 H3 and everyone who supported them. It can happen. I'm not saying anticipated, I'm not saying, you know, expected, but I'm saying be prepared for it. Um, that's the nature of fair use. It is doubly, if not triply, unpredictable. Because if we could like do like a graph of fair use rulings, for example, it wouldn't be a single straight line. It would be a scatter plot with all these outliers in all directions, and unpredictable rulings would abound. So, yes... Do not, ex do not be 100% sure this is going to go the way you want. Now, that being said, I and some of my lawyer friends have talked about this case at some length, and the conclusion we've reached is that the most likely outcome is going to be that Haas will drop it sometime soon. And the reason is this. He's not probably not playing with his money, but he's playing with someone's money. And now that there's this fund to um, defend the case, and now that there's this prospect of a long, drawn-out battle, the risk keeps escalating. The risk on you know, Haas' side keeps going up, while the risk on, you know, h 3 side isn't really changing that much. In fact, it's gone down, if anything. That changes the calculus when you're taking on this lawsuit, and at some point, at some point, the cost of the lawsuit is going to far exceed any potential, um, any potential collections from it. So, yeah, there you go. Anyways, all I'm saying is, Yes, what is going on with you know, the FUPA, I do love saying that acronym, is awesome. What is going on with H3H3, it's very positive, it's a very good development for them, but this case is far, far, far from a sure thing. While I certainly believe it's a fair use, I'm not the decider, you're not the decider probably, it's going to depend upon what the judge and or jury say, so keep fighting. Keep getting it out there, and we will see what happens. But on that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining me. Sorry for the slightly more rambly than usual video, but I will see you guys next time.